in the wake of the 2020 elections, deemed the most secure in American history by officials of the previous administration, former President Trump told a lie, a big lie, that the election was stolen. Without proof or evidence, the former president and his allies repeated this lie over and over again, poisoning faith in our democracy and fomenting an armed insurrection at the Capitol. And now, in states across the country, Republican legislatures have seized on the big lie to restrict the franchise and inevitably make it harder for African Americans, Latinos, students, and the working poor to vote. Here in the 21st century, we are witnessing an attempt at the greatest contraction of voting rights since the end of Reconstruction and the beginning of Jim Crow. I yield the floor. Thank you, Senator Schumer. Senator McConnell. Madam Chairman, <clears throat> we'll hear a lot of flowery language uh, today, including my friend and colleague, the Majority Leader. But we all learned early in life, if you can write the rules, you can win the game. If you can write the rules, you can win the game. For multiple years now, not just this year, but for multiple years now, Democrats have called this sweeping bill their top priority. You just heard the majority leader make a totally partisan speech about it. There's nothing bipartisan about this. This was cooked up at the Democratic National Committee and designed to advantage one side to the disadvantage of the other. The Democratic Party, on its own, wants to rewrite the ground rules of American politics for their benefit. We all know that's what this is about. It's hard to imagine anything that would erode public confidence in our democracy more drastically. Let's call it what it is. Put aside the flower language. This is a partisan effort to take over how you do, how you conduct elections in our country. Madam Chairwoman, this legislation, I believe, is the most radical legislation the Senate has considered in the nine years I've been here, and it is the most dangerous legislation pending before the United States Congress. You know, I listened to the speeches this morning. I listened to Senator Schumer's speech, where he recounted this country's shameful history of Jim Crow laws. And he's right. Jim Crow laws were bigoted, racist, and disenfranchised millions of people. And it is worth remembering that those Jim Crow laws were drafted by Democrats, they were implemented by Democrats, and they kept Democrats in power. Now, today's talking point repeated in the media is that was the Democrats of yesterday, not today. Well, today the Democrats are doing it again. This legislation, to use a phrase that has been popularized on the media recently, is Jim Crow 2.0. This legislation would disenfranchise millions of Americans. Many of us are referring to this legislation as the Corrupt Politicians Act because it would do. Senator Schumer talked about politicians picking their constituents. That's what this legislation does. This legislation is designed to ensure that Democrats never lose another election. This legislation would register millions of illegal aliens to vote. It is intended to do that. It is intended to do that because Democrats have made the decision that millions of illegal aliens voting are likely to vote for Democrats. This would register vast numbers of criminals and felons to vote because Democrats have made the decisions that criminals and felons are likely to vote for Democrats. This legislation strikes down virtually every voter integrity law adopted at the state level. Voter ID laws. Over 70% of Americans support voter ID laws. By the way, over 60% of African Americans in this country support voter ID laws. 29 states have voter ID laws on the books. What does this legislation do? Strikes them all down. It says it's illegal for any state to have a voter ID law. Ballot harvesting, 31 states prohibit ballot harvesting. Why? Because it is a corrupt practice where paid operatives handle the ballots of someone else and it has repeatedly led to instances of stealing 
votes. What does this bill do? It strikes down all 31 states' restrictions on ballot harvesting. This bill turns the Federal Election Commission from a bipartisan agency into a partisan agency. Into a partisan agency controlled by Democrats. Why? Because Democrats want Chuck Schumer in charge of the Fe Federal Election Commission. The effect of that, I will point out, will be that every Republican senator and every Republican House member will be investigated, will be fined, will be prosecuted by the Federal Election Commission. By the way, if this bill were to pass and miraculously Democrats were to lose power, and this is designed to make it impossible for Democrats to lose power, I ask you for a moment which Democrat on this committee would want a Federal Election Committee controlled by Senator McConnell? Because I guarantee you, Every Democrat would then be investigated and prosecuted, and the Federal Election Commission shouldn't be a partisan weapon designed to win elections. This legislation is profoundly dangerous, and the reason it suppresses millions of votes is by allowing millions of people to vote illegally. And that is the intended effect, and that would be the actual effect of this bill. It dilutes the legal votes of American citizens. Senator Schumer said, and I wrote this down, the stench of oppression. When Democrats drafted Jim Crow the last time, well, the stench of oppression is here again. Senator Schumer said, the eyes of history are on you. Well, the eyes of history are on you as well. And let me point out something. It was just a few years ago that Republicans had control of the White House, the Senate, and the House. We didn't do this. We didn't try to change the election rules so that Democrats could never be elected. We didn't engage in the corruption to say, we're going to rig the game so if the voters decide to throw the bums out, the voters don't get the right to do that because we're going to put our thumb on the scale so that only our party wins. To my knowledge, not a single Republican suggested doing that. This bill doesn't protect voting rights. It steals voting rights from the American people. In the course of this markup, I expect that we're going to consider a number of amendments. I've introduced 46 amendments focused on substantive elements of this bill. And we're going to discuss each aspect of this bill and how they disenfranchise the American voters. But sadly, I expect to see a lot of play acting. All Democrats voting against those amendments, all Republicans voting for them. Because this bill isn't designed to be bipartisan. This bill was drafted to get zero Republican votes. It got zero Republican votes in the House. And it was drafted to get zero Republican votes in the Senate. Why? Because it's not about protecting anyone's rights. It's about ensuring one party's dominance at the expense of the voting rights of the American people. And by the way, the history of the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendment, landmark victories for voting rights in this country, it was the Republican Party that led the fight to pass those amendments. We should be protecting everyone's right and facilitating fraud and registering people to vote illegally undermines the integrity of democracy. And as Senator Schumer observed, the eyes of history are, are on all of us. If this amendment and others that you suggest are accepted, will you vote for the bill? Do, do you see what I'm saying? I, I, I do. It, uh, to be candid, it is difficult to imagine a set of amendments being adopted that would cause me to vote for this bill. It would take a fundamentally different bill. Uh, that being said, each of these amendments are designed to strike out egregious aspects of this bill. So if some of these amendments were adopted. It might conceivably convince some Republicans to support it if it ceased being a partisan power grab. Um, as long as it remains a partisan power grab, you're not going to see Republicans voting in favor of a partisan power grab. So, so these amendments are good faith amendments in the sense that they are striking out particularly problematic and egregious components of the bill. Uh, but in order to actually have bipartisan legislation, I, I would think you would need to go back to the drawing board and actually sit down with Republicans and focus on 
ways to, to expand voter participation and protect the integrity of the election. That was not the objective of this bill, and I would note that the talking points for this bill are now all focused on what President Trump said about the last election, but this bill was drafted in 2017 after President Trump had won. It had nothing to do with what Donald Trump said about this election, which is part of why it is, as written, such a direct partisan power grab. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay.